Hi guys, we're here for Art Room Organization Part 2. Um, so, and we're shooting it vlog style, obviously. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about stamp and stamp storage. Uh, last time we talked about stencil storage. Where's my rack? It is behind my head. Oop, oop, oop. There it is. You see it? There, 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 over my shoulder. Right there. All right. Love the rack, by the way. It's working out great. Um, as far as my stamp storage, it's been an evolution for me for literally for years. I hesitate to say it, but we're probably going on a decade, 10 years or more. Um, I um, have a few videos already on my channel regarding stamps and stamp storage and unmounting woodblock stamps. I'm going to link the videos I can find in the description below. Um, when I first started my journey into mixed media, I was a creative memories consultant, fun fact, and doing a lot of scrapbooking. I quickly learned that although it was a nice thing for me to document my family's life and journey, I didn't enjoy scrapbooking in general. I didn't enjoy card making. So my first round of purging was getting rid of a lot of those kind of stamps. Um, and over the years, I've really whittled it down to things I use for mixed media. I don't have any more alphabet stamps. I have very few sentiment stamps. Um, and the ones that I do are mixed media oriented type stamps. Stamps, For instance, they don't say thank you. They don't say happy birthday. They say believe, create, inspire. Um, I've stored my stamps in lots of different things. Bins, baskets, boxes. The one that works for me and has worked for me um, and still does from the old house that I'm really not changing much are my quarter bins and my CD cases. So I am going to show you how they sit in the closet. We'll talk about that a little bit. Then I'll pull one down to show you what I mean. Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, so here is the inside of my closet and this white bin in the far right is my silhouette. This is my bind it all machine. And then these are all my stamps, all these little boxes. They're called a quarter bin. They're from Target. I don't know if they make them anymore, but they're literally called a quarter bin. So if you type that into the Target website and search it, that's what you should find. Um, I also, in the quarter bin, I have, these are CD cases. We'll get a better look at those in a minute. I have them categoried um, categorized, categorized into categories that work for me. So for instance, people, doodles and small backgrounds, backgrounds, nature, houses, images, Tim Holtz, Dina Wakely, Ranger, Tim Holtz, blueprint stamps, and then my own stamp line. Um, so those are the ones that work for me. I do have a few and by few, I think I mean maybe one wood mount stamp left. I don't really use wood mount stamps. I use cling mount. Uh, red rubber is my preferred um, kind of stamp, a deep edged red rubber. I can not only use it in a mixed media way without a stamp block, but I can make great stamp images with it. I do have one drawer in the closet down lower that, as you see, as you see says stamp, stamping blocks and tools. I have the Tim Holtz stamping platform. I have acrylic blocks and that sort of thing in here um, to stamp with. Um, that's what I have. It's not a lot. And the one wood mount and stamp I believe is my in my desk because it says happy mail. Okay, so this is what my quarter bin looks like. This happens to be the one with my design line in it, so it's really full. And when I add more stamps to my design line, I don't know what, to, what I'm going to do about these bins because they, I don't think they make them anymore. Um, there are other bins that are of a similar size, um, so I will probably just add one of those or I'll double up a category to make more room. Uh, I'm going to give you measurements in a minute. What I store the stamps in are empty CD cases. So these um, actually are CD cases, but they don't have the little circle-y thing in them to hold the CD. So they're perfect for storing rubber stamps. I get them on Amazon. I'm going to link them in the description below. And I do 
for my line, put a copy of what the stamped images look like inside the you know plastic cover that comes on the outside of the case, um, or I stamp the stamps off on a piece of paper and then put that in there. Um, and on mine, I have them labeled because I otherwise don't remember which ones they are. <laughs> um, I do try to label the stamps and that way um, if somebody asks me, um, I can tell them. I seem to be a little bit mildly better about labeling the stamps than I am stencils. I suck at that. Um, what I will say is this storage system seems to really work for me uh, really well. It has for a long time. Like I said, the only thing is I can't get these bins anymore, which does kind of bug me. Um, let's see, the bins are about six and an eighth inches high. They are about six and a half inches wide. And they are about approximately um, 13 and a half inches long. And they hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 CD cases very tightly. Um, this works really well for me. It may not work for you. Maybe a binder works better for you. Maybe you have a file cabinet or other storage system that works better for you. For me, this works great. They are inside the closet, but they're in a place I can easily grab them and use them. They're categorized in a way that I can easily grab, say, the box of background stamps when I want to do an abstract background. And I know there is going to be a stamp in there that's going to work for me really well. Um, so this is what I do. I'd be interesting to, interested to hear what you do. Um, when There's a lot of different ways, like with everything else that you can do storage in your art room. So let's share. I'd love if you guys all went over to our, A Life of Art and Self-Expression or Art Joy of Sharing and um, let's share what we do in our storage rooms and maybe help other creatives out who are struggling with how to store their stamps. Um, the one thing I will tell you that I did do is all that purging. Um, I really, um, over the years, have purged down to what I really love and what I'm really going to use. Um, I did do another round of purging right after I moved when I knew the stencils were going on that rack and I knew all my stamps were gonna, um, these actually, these stamps from my design line were in a binder. And while that worked in the old space, it didn't work here in the new space and I really wanted them all in one of these bins so that meant I had to purge some more. And I knew I had still stamps in there that I wasn't ever gonna use and I got rid of them all. Um, no matter how bad about it I felt because I spent money on them, it was better for me to sell them or pass them along to somebody who would use them than for me to hang on to them and then just take up space and not be used. Um, so it's not about having a ton of stuff. It's about just having stuff that you're going to use. Um, I have, like I've said, a lot less stuff than I used to in this room. Um, but what I have, I can get to. And that's like the name of the game. And just keeping what you love. And next I'm going to be um, working on the stickers, which is another stickers and die cuts that box. You haven't seen that yet. That's going to be in part three. Um, anyway, so this is what I do with my stamps. I'd be interested to see what you do. Um, share what you do and um, yeah, uh, watch those other videos. They're in the description below. I do still own a few stamps. Hang on. I own a few stamps like this one. These were wood mounted stamps. I unmounted it. This is how it came off. <laughs> I've never replaced the foam on the back or anything. Um, somewhere I also have a handwriting stamp that's actually cracked in half when I unmounted it and I did keep it because I do like that stamp. Um, for me, I should probably just take that off. For me, having them on wood blocks, I knew right away a long time ago wasn't going to work for me. And although I love some of the stamps like this one, storing them on their wood blocks takes up a lot of space. And then rifling through them when you want to pick one out to create with just drove me crazy. Because unless you have a room even bigger than the one I have now, and you can devote a whole entire wall to just wooden block stamp storage, um, it's 
you're gonna just have them in a bin somewhere and you're gonna have to dig through it. And that just drove, for me, that drove me crazy. That might be fine for you. For me, it drove me crazy. Um, and I also had other priorities for the wall space in my old art room as I do in the new one. So just dedicating a whole entire wall to stamp storage wasn't gonna work for me. So I unmounted the stamps a long time ago and I do have a video for that. I have a lot of different things I tried for um, sticking them to a acrylic block. Um, some of them worked okay, some of them didn't. What you can do is um, you can just keep microwaving it, when, which is basically how you take it off the wood block and you microwave it enough till you get this stuff off. And then you put it, um, you attach the rubber to some easy mount. Um, easy mount is a clean mount stamp foam um, that you can put red rubber stamps on and then make it into a clean mount stamp. Um, so I'll link that in the description below too, along with the video links and everything else. Um, I just, I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do with your stamp storage. This really works for me. It may not work for you, but if you have something else that works, we, I'd love to hear it. Let's share and let's inspire each other to create a easy, happy, stress-free creative space for everybody. I, I really, I wish that for everybody. Um, and I want to share ideas so everybody can have that. And that's it for right now. Don't forget to please like, share, and subscribe. Check out the description for all those links I spoke of. There's also a link to Linktree. Uh, the Linktree is a, basically a list of links. Uh, my social media links, my places online that you can support the free content here on YouTube and over on Facebook like Patreon and my Etsy store and my Amazon affiliate store and all of that stuff. Um, I have a Teespring store coming out. Um, you're going to be able to get some of my artwork on, on leggings and things. And um, what else? My happy mail address is down there and a bunch of other stuff. So check that out. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon if you want notifications on future videos. And the most important thing, go out and have a great day. Enjoy your space. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.